Good afternoon. Today is the 17th of August and uh, I'm still at the collectively Camberley Classic Car Show. Or just Car Show, I think it is. And uh, I found something very unusual. I think a lot of you will remember in 1993 uh, when Jurassic Park actually came out. And um, this is a replica of Ford Explorers that they used as the tour vehicles there. This is, I think, a 93 or 94. I don't actually know. I'm not very good on American cars. But this has been modified to such an accurate extent. It's got, it's got the camera on the front. It's got the bull bars. It's got the, it's got the roof. I mean, it's, it's correct in every detail. I think it's got the right color interior. It's got the visor. It's got Jurassic Park merchandise and the boot and a torch you're not supposed to keep on and yep yeah, the stickers someone's worked extremely hard on this car to make it look and feel exactly how it should do and i'm not surprised people have my photographs taken outside of it wow cameras on the, on the dashboard as well. I've seen replica Jeeps from, uh, from Jurassic Park, but I've not seen replica Explorer. I think Steven Spielberg uh, himself used to own one of these, which is why they changed it in the novel Jurassic Park. They used Toyota Land Cruisers, but um, obviously Ford off of these, and it's got the monitor over there as well. It's absolutely insane. Continuing this um, 90s retro theme, I couldn't really get very really close to that um, Ford Explorer because there's so many people wanted to see it. And I apologise, uh, you know, in, in advance for incorrect information, of wind noise and background music and things like that. It's just the way that these things go. Um, we got this um, beautiful Honda Renesex, I think this is a 91. Uh, note the correct um, wheels for the UK market. Uh, this is a manual, Planet Auto rec um, recently um, had an automatic early NSX like this one um, on test and I think the review is coming out quite soon. Um, lovely colour, beige leather interior. I think the manuals like this, this is an early one, so it's a J-Reg, um, didn't actually have power steering, only the automatics did. I might be able to get a better shot because someone left a window open ever so slightly and so, oh yes, there we are, the beige leather interior. Um, this just not look like, I think, the, I don't know if that Targa Reef comes up or not, I'm not really sure on this. Um, but yes, an, an incredible car, they're worth a lot of money, these early NSXs. It's not really hard to see why. If we go over here, we'll, we'll see another um, Japanese car. This is a Nissan Q, but they, these sold incredibly badly when they were on the UK market in about 2011. This is a Kaizen version. Um, it's a D-Day 2011, very popular in Japan, didn't really sell well over here at all. I mean, an interesting car, it's not quite my cup of tea, but you go, you've got a standard reversing camera, which you can see there. Um, white's a classic colour to these. Haven't got the little kind of frilly map thing on the dashboard, but you know, nevertheless, it's good to see one of these here. I'm going to ignore like loads of these Ferraris because that doesn't interest me particularly that much. Um, I mean, this F355 is quite nice. Uh, the rest of them, I don't know, not, not my kind of thing really. But uh, yes, nevertheless, you've got classic specification in um, this one. Got the uh, beige leather interior, tiny, tiny gear lever, absolutely tiny gear lever because it's the F1 versions in 96. I think it's probably noticed of course. Um, what's more interesting to me though is this. It's a 1980 I think. 1980 Triumph Dolomite Sprint. Full professionals spec. Oh my gosh. Correct front spoiler. Correct alloy wheels. Pinstripe on the side. Vinyl roof. I mean, this is, I think I've just 
could have arrived in car heaven. Um, absolutely amazing, correct colour, everything about it is just beautiful. Beautiful car, every detail. I absolutely love this. Just absolutely wonderful. Oh yes, and look at look at that interior. Period correct, stereo and everything. Just wonderful. Someone's even put rear inertia real seat belts in. Fantastic. And then we've got this uh, Morris Minor convertible. These are um, very expensive actually these days. These are uh, Matt from Furious Driving recently reviewed one of these. I think it was this colour. This is a 64. So it has the kind of older style steering wheel. Um, 1100cc, like the ODO 16 Morris and Morris cars. Very nice indeed. Another uh, Morris Minor here. This is a Morris 1000 uh, custom pickup. Very, very nice indeed. Um, not quite to my taste, particularly in this colour with these sort of wheels. Um, I like many lights. I don't know if it quite suits this car, but there we go. Oh yes, Jaguar XJ6 Series 1. Originally a 2.8 and now a uh, 4.2. Very nice. I think this is probably a long wheel base, given it's a little bit of a later car. It's probably a 1971, yes it is, but short wheelbase was discontinued um, quite early on in, in the life of the Series 1 XJ6. There we go, look at that interior. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I don't know if it's hiding a gun in the dashboard like in the special episode where the heat cools off, which one of these was hiding a gun in the dashboard, but period crack seat belts, original steering wheel, very nice. And then, oh yes, a Daimler V8 250 from 1967. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Again, cracked alloy wheels. This is this was a sort of um, upmarket Jaguar Mark II. Sensibly, somebody's put seat belts in this. Very lovely interior. Look at this immaculate interior. Absolutely beautiful. Love the colour. Love the interior. Just, just amazing. It's worth coming for things like this alone. Um, nice big opening sunshine roof. Um, 1933 Ford 8Y. Final location for the batteries. And look how tiny that engine is. Look at all the space you get and all the access. No, it's, it's really, really easy to work on, I imagine. Then we've got, um, gosh, really old. 1924 Singer Tang. I don't know anything about these cars, but that looks so old. And the paint job's deliberately kind of, um, you know, not perfect. Beautiful. And so is this uh, 1951 MG MGTD. Left-hand drive, probably originally uh, an American market car, I would have thought. Um, very old-fashioned car in the early 50s, but they sold loads of these. Particularly in America, actually, but sold an absolute boatload of these. Yep, living in the USA for 55 years before fully restored in Britain. Wonderful. Next, we have uh, an award winning 1936 Fiat Topolino A. Now, this car is actually right hand drive, but it could very well be that this um, is not. There we go, there's the award there. Um, this could be an original Italian market car because I think actually a lot of these were right-hand driving if they were sold in Italy. Very, very sort of 30. I mean, this thing's absolutely tiny. What a, what a tiny back seat. This was the original 500 of a Topolino, which means Mickey Mouse in Italian, isn't his nickname? Just a, it's like a shoe. I mean, it must be very, very cosy if you've got two people sitting in there. Lovely Riley, only 32. Riley Plus Ultra Special. Again, lovely engine accessibility on this car. Something else I've noticed, this uh, 1962 Ford Anglia Estate, um, modified by a company called Ferrari. I think I've only ever seen a picture of one of these. I've actually never 
There's some information there. I've never actually seen one of these in real life before. Absolutely, utterly wonderful. It's a restaurant de deluxe sanglier. Um, so that's why it's got the kind of slightly snazzier, snazzier grill on it. Mind you, the standard Anglias are pretty rare, so most of them are deluxe, like the one in Harry Potter, of course. Um, 1957 Austin A35, it's got the larger rear window. Um, period correct wheels. And this is what an original car kind of looks like. It's got the correct sort of seats and steering wheel. I see a lot of these are modified. This one doesn't look like it is. Larger rear window because it's an A35. There's some really nice stuff just in the centre of town here. Um, Porsche 356 Speedster replica based on a 72 Beetle. I mean, a load of kind of uh, things like Nissan Skylines and things like that. I'm not sure I'm that fussed about these kind of cars really, but uh, some people obviously are. Obviously very good to drive. I think it's an R30. Is it an R32 yeah. Skyline? Ah, hmm. uh, Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution, I think it's a six. Hmm. I didn't say I'm not very good on these, so I'll just have to not say it. It's an Evolution RS Sprint model. Nice anyway. This car reminds me of um, the 1950 um, film directed by Basil Dearden called The Blue Lamp. Um, it was the police drama which introduced the character of George Dixon, Dixon of Doc Green, although he got killed in the film and resurrected from the BBC series uh, five years later. Now, the police cars in The Blue Lamp were not um, for V8 pilots, they were Wolseleys, I believe, but this was the car that they were chasing. So, it's interesting to see one of these as a police car. Um, Ford V8 Pilot was um, produced uh, pre and post war. Um, obviously, this ran in, in sort of parallel with um, with um, the console that we saw earlier. Very different in terms of styling, but much more typically sort of pre war thing. So, if I can point the camera at the interior. There's a little gap there, but it's too small for me to put the camera through, but I think you can see, you can get the idea. Um, yeah, this is, this is a lovely condition as well. It's beautiful. Someone's obviously spent a long time polishing all that chrome. Something else that's a little bit different here. This is a 1982 Buick Riviera. Um, these were never imported to Britain officially, so this would have been personally imported at some point. Absolutely enormous car, you know, period correct details, white wall tyres and the Buick hubcaps and this huge kind of open dashboard side and all these sort of power controls for everything. Typical of the, of, of the period. And now we have ooh, 1960 Wolsey 1560. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at that interior and the horn rim. Uh, very kind of sort of late 50s, early 60s design with this sort of sun shield on the front, lovely two-tone paintwork, beautiful colour, um, got the toy version down there as well. Very, very, very nice. Rather like this uh, Rover 95 P4, very late P4. It's 1964, it's the last year of production. Very different indeed from um, the, uh, the cars that, that came after it, which would have been the P6, introduced in 63. So this is the industrial production for about a year. Just, I suppose, more traditional people like these. But yes, a very Doris thing. Very, very, very attractive car, very wonderful condition and um, very sort of typical sort of 50s colour, not much of 60s, but a very 50s colour. Very nice. I do love this Toyota Celica. It's 1979 Toyota Celica, two litre liftback. Kind of American looking car in many ways. I think a lot of the yellow Celicas were. Uh, very typical Japanese interior of the period. Heavily tinted sort of glass, blue interior, little wood kind of accents, wooden steering wheel, 
to the five speed gearbox, yes it is, very nice. There's the um, sort of lift hatchback, beautiful car. Another beautiful Toyota, this is a 1981 Toyota Crown 2.8. Very, again, American looking car, but clearly made in Japan. Just in details like these door handles, the colour is very, very, very early 80s. Typical of the period. Very kind of formal design, upright. It's just interesting to see that, you know, the, the sort of trend for rounded shape, like the Ford Sierra and the Audi 100, clearly had passed um, Toyota by to some extent. Super saloon as well. Mm -hmm. So we look at that interior, yes. Automatic transmission, loads and loads and loads of switches, power controls, nice steering wheel. Not the colour as well, it goes very well with the exterior paintwork. We've also got this uh, Porsche 944, I think I can just poke you through the sunroof there so you can see the interior. Yeah, there we go. I don't know if this is a 944 Turbo, which is a normal 944, it's still very nice though. I remember when these were not expensive at all. Um, it was up for you know, low four figures, you certainly can't do that now. Yes, 76 Porsche 944 Lux. Once again, fixed penalty notice. Quite a kind of wide, aggressive looking car. Aggressive in a different way is this 1987 um, Ford Fiesta XR2. This is a Mark II Fiesta, fixed penalty notice again. Um, here is a car in correct specification, correct pepper alloy wheels, correct seats. There's the correct dashboard for the upscale uh, Mark II Fiestas and the correct um, steering wheel, correct seats. Absolutely, utterly beautiful, award-winning car, lovely condition. I like it, I mean, red's not my favorite color on a car, but it is a sort of classic color for, for an XR2. Spotlights as well, headlamp protectors. You don't want to have to buy a new headlamp for a car like this, particularly, but it's very, very nice indeed. Whilst it's quiet, we'll just get a shot of um, a China's famous uh, comfy loafer, he calls it. It needs an entire rebuild, I think, the sip. You've got the pizza of it, just the steering. You've got the. We've got a can of Guinness to control the handbrake, and you've got a, a chocolate bar, completely road legal, MOT'd. But yeah, there's uh, Ed himself. I'm not going to talk to him today. I think he's probably got enough admiring fans to want to take a photograph with him. But here it is. I've never seen it before in real life, so it's good to see it. It does have seat belts, in case you were wondering. Fascinating thing. It's based on the kind of mini mechanicals, I think. So there's another shot of the um, 2004 Alfa Romeo 156 GTA Sport Wagon we saw earlier in the video. We don't get killed by a cyclist at the same time. So we've come sort of um, back to where we started in the previous video. Just want to show you um, some lotuses that are here, as well as the final car we'll see in a second. You see it in the background there. This is a 1974 Lotus Europa Twin Cam. You can see it's had a lot of restoration on it. Really, really low car. I mean, the car that they used in the Avengers was a very early Series 2 Europa. This is um, a much later one. It's actually got door handles on the outside that aren't little buttons. Um, pretty incredible sort of interior. I mean, getting in and out of that must be a pain when you do your back in, I think. Um, very in interesting, controversial design of these. We've also got a Lotus Excel. This was a sort of cheaper Lotus of the, the 1980s. I think this is about 80, 85 or thereabouts, 86. 2.2 uh, Lotus twin cam engine in this. Some Morris Marina door handles, of course, just like everything else. There's the interior, the typical Lotus sort of in 80s interior, similar to the one that you would have found on an Esprit. Um, but, you know, bright yellow stands out a lot. It's not 80, 84, I do apologize, 85, 84. Excel. And then finally, we've got this 1929. 
Riley Mark IV 9 horsepower Tourer. Beautiful kind of engineering on these sort of very old cars. This car is now 90 years old. Must be a bit of a pig to drive, but fun to see it anyway here. So I do hope you enjoyed that video. I'm going to have to uh, bring it to a close now due to um, copyright infringement and all kinds of things and background noise. Um, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to um, like this video, leave a comment below. Uh, visit my website www.lloydvehiclesconsulting.co.uk and my Facebook page is facebook.com forward slash Lloyd Vehicle Consulting. Thank you ever so much indeed for watching.